Hi everyone and welcome to Know Your Food with Wardy. I'm Wardy, a wife, mom of three, and the lead teacher and founder of traditionalcookingschool.com. I'm also the author of The Complete Idiot's Guide to Fermenting Foods. I'm so glad you're here. This is the podcast devoted to healthy family cooking with traditional methods like sourdough and old-fashioned pickling. These foods are delicious, easy, healthy, and your family will love them. If you haven't already, be sure to grab my free gift for you. It's five free traditional cooking videos from Inside Traditional Cooking School that will introduce you to my favorite fundamental techniques of traditional cooking. To start watching now, just go to knowyourfoodpodcast.com slash watch. And now let's get to today's episode. Hi everyone, welcome to Know Your Food with Wardy. This is episode 161, so if you're catching this later, right now I'm doing a live recording on Periscope. On Periscope, I'm at Trad Cook School, so welcome to all of you. But if you're catching this later on iTunes or through the video replay, um, it's all available for you. All the replay information, show notes, and everything at knowyourfoodpodcast.com slash 161. I wanna give a special warm welcome to my live audience. And thank you so much for the hearts that are flowing on Periscope and for sharing to your friends and family. Please just chime in as we go. I have some wonderful information, life-changing information to share with you today. So as we go, I just love to hear from you. Um, if you're live, of course, you can tap the screen or you can share comments as we go. But if you're checking this out later, the comments are ready for you at knowyourfoodpodcast.com slash 161. So please visit there. I really want to hear from you in the comments there. So if you're listening on audio, you can switch to video. If you're, in switch, if you're watching the video, you can switch to audio. All of those options are there for you as well, the show notes. So let's get into this. Um, you already have seen the title of today's podcast. So you know we're talking about banishing stress and finding more joy. And as moms and uh, family cooks, I know we've got some men out there, um, we are a lot of time in the kitchen. And um, that's not always good, right? I mean, there's stresses that happen there. We may have extra workload. We may have picky eaters. Uh, we may have health issues that we're trying to get on top of. So there's a lot of stress potential. And if we're not careful, it can rid our joy, you know, just wreck things in our life and make it a chore and make it dreary and make it something we dread that can be somewhat depressing instead of something that gives us so much joy because of the nourishment and the work we're able to do with our hands for our families, uh, for God's glory. So one thing that happens a lot, um, you know, in any domain of life, but in particular here on Know Your Food with Wardy and Traditional Cooking School, we focus on the kitchen. So stress can happen a lot in the kitchen. And I don't think most people give stress the credit that it really should get for the, um, the really bad things it can do in our health and in our lives. I don't think we take it seriously enough. I even think sometimes people are proud of the fact that I'm so stressed out or I'm so busy or, you know, there's so many things are going on and there's this like pride in busyness. I don't know where it comes from because actually I think we should try to get as, as much away from it as possible and really embrace the joy and the peace and, you know, the, the strength in, in happiness and love that the Lord promises us, you know, I mean, I know that heaven is the one day fulfillment of perfection and no more sadness and no more tears and all that. But on earth, I think he's given us through the Holy Spirit and through his word, um, the ability to be as happy and peaceful and lean on him as much as possible. So let's stop taking pride in being stressed out and busy and let's instead pursue the opposite. Um, chronic stress, and I love what you guys are saying in the comment. Amen, and busyness is straight from the enemy of God. So chronic stress especially, and we're prone to it, our husbands are prone to it, even our children are prone to it if, we, if we're not careful to help them guard against it. They, they're not as mature as us, and if we can pave the way by learning some of these important lessons ourselves, we can do a better job with our children to get them on the right pathway, maybe even avoid some of the pitfalls that we have fallen into as grown-ups. And I am speaking from experience here because... I wish uh, that I knew some of the things that I knew know now when I was younger. And I'm doing my darndest to convey that to our children, and my husband is as well, so that they can, they can do better and avoid some of the things that we didn't avoid. Anyway, 
So there's stress and I think chronic stress and chronic stress is where bad things happen. Um, in our family, there's five of us and I think three of us are especially prone to stress, some more than others and in different ways. And I'm just gonna be very general and talk about the effects that chronic stress can have on in your life. And you may resonate with some of these, you may have other things to add. And if you do, feel free to visit the show notes and tell us the effects that stress has had on your life or your loved ones. So I feel that stress and especially chronic stress can impact how well you sleep, how you interact with each other, your relationships, very important, can affect your performance just in terms of the job that you're expected or want to do to serve your family and others for your life. What's your life's work? Stress can affect your performance in that. Um, it can affect your health and well-being overall. It can affect how you manage your weight. And I'll get into more specifics of some of these things. And although I could focus on stress in life, I'm going to try to keep it to the kitchen. Um, but of course, it applies across the board. So we're going to talk about um, key areas in the kitchen where we want to banish stress, dress stress and find more joy. Okay, so we're going to go into those um, six steps. Now, first, I want to ask our live audience a question um, and you can give a thumbs up in the comments if you feel that stress is something that you need to work on in your life or in your family members lives so is this resonating with you is this something that's important to you would you like to have uh, less stress and more joy in the kitchen or in your life tell me in the comments just by leaving a thumbs up I'll give you a moment to do that so we're getting one thumbs up more thumbs up, all kinds of thumbs up. Great. Well, I'm glad we're on the same page. Um, as I share these things, you, you guys are going to hear some personal things about my family. Um, <laughs> Liza Jane, her nodded aching up her back says, yes. Yeah, I have something to say just to you. I'm retired and sometimes I still need help, says another. Anyway, as we, as we dive into these six ways that you can banish stress and find more joy in your life, I'll be sharing some personal things about my family because this is something that is so close to heart for us. Uh, we've just come a long way and we have so much, so much more to go. But my husband and I are both type A people. Um, and, you know, one thing that's been with me is that tight upper back like you, Liza, and tension headaches. And for my husband, it's not sleeping well and worrying about things. And anyway, there's just... So there's just, this plays out in so many people's lives. And so since it's so close to our hearts, I felt like it's time to talk about it and to give stress um, the place it deserves in our focus to get rid of it. And let's not let it go anymore. Let's really be active. So six ways to banish stress um, and find more joy in your kitchen and your life. Number one is calm down. I know that sounds so simple and so trite, but this is such a mindset thing. You have to you have to really attack this stress thing from your mindset. And it's it's all in the way that you handle difficulty and stressors, whatever those stressors are. So example, if you're a person who habitually gets annoyed by clutter or little hands that get in your way or a recipe not working out or you're like the busy bee in the kitchen and it's all, all about your workload and how busy you are and you worry about it and how you're going to get it all done, well, just realize that every time you indulge one of those things, you are triggering a stress response each and every time. The annoyance, the anger, the anxiety, it's all stress and you're triggering a stress response in your body. And if you do it habitually, you are under a chronic stress response load. And I'm not sure if that's the right way to say it, but you are under chronic stress. And so if you're under chronic stress, you're literally making yourself sick over and over again. What do I mean by sick? Chronic elevated cortisol levels, it's not good for you or your family. It's not good for the people that you live with either. It can interrupt or prevent your sleeping well at night. It can bring on tension headaches or aches and pains. I know you guys are resonating with this because you're saying in the comments, it can mean your body is less burning, busy, burning excess weight or producing other hormones. Like in the comments, we're getting the adrenal fatigue mentioned. Yes, you can literally burn yourself out. And if you're burning yourself out with stress, with cortisol, adrenaline, then your body's not regulating your metabolism. It's not producing the hormones that keep you at peace or happy. It's not leading to good sleep. It's not producing the hormones you need for your libido to be healthy and vibrant. Um, also gaining weight, yes. So it has these ripple effects and, and um, far-reaching effects through your overall health 
and and that then can affect your family. So I wanted to turn to the Bible for a bit here because this is a portion of Bible verses that has been so important to me my entire life and has been a, become especially helpful to my family in recent months. And that's Philippians 4, verses 6, 6 through 8. Be anxious for nothing, but in prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there's any virtue and if there's anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. So all these things, you know, we're not supposed to be anxious, we're supposed to rejoice, and we're supposed to focus on all these positive things. This is the absolute opposite of the stressors that are getting us chronically stressed. So item number one was to calm down, and it's more the mindset thing. Now I realize I didn't get very practical with helping you how, so that's what I'm going to move into number two now, which is a practical way to focus on the good things in your life. And so number two is, don't sweat the small stuff. Look, we have a responsibility for our thoughts and actions, and if we don't take that responsibility seriously and we fall into bad habits, the bad habits that I've been talking about, like getting angry or annoyed or worrying, uh, then it's really on our plate. What's happening is our fault. And I know that most people don't want to hear that, but I think if we're honest with ourselves, we admit, can admit that that's true. Some people say, and I know I've said it myself, so I'm guilty of this, well, I'm just that way. That's just how I am. That's how I handle these things. I can't help it. Well, I'm telling myself and I'm telling everybody out there who said the same thing, you can help it at some point. Maybe it was when you were four years old or six years old or eight years old or in college or at some point you decided that those little things that are bothering you are important enough to stress over, worry about, get angry about. So your reactions at this point, you could say, I can't help it. That's because it's habitual. But at some point you did choose to get upset. Um, you're maybe not be purposely doing it anymore, but you did once choose to get upset about it, um, no matter how much thought you gave it. Um, so you got to break that. And so how do you break it? You put it in perspective. That's what I mean by don't sweat the small stuff. These are really, really small, small things. Now, I know that there's major crises and things where we have a stress response. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the chronic stressors that get us upset, worried, or angry. And um, Melinda is saying in the comments, singing and music helps me reduce the stress. Yes, exactly. That is one way to reduce stress in your life is to you know, change your course, take a break, singing music. We do, we don't, none of us in our family are great singers, unfortunately. Actually, the kids are, but anyway, we love music. So put it in perspective, do activities that reduce your stress like the singing or music. Also, I would say to pray and ask the Lord to help you identify when you're doing that stress response again. It could be so habitual you don't even realize it, so you actually need divine intervention or you need to give permission to a family member that you can trust who lovingly trust and give them permission. Would you please tell me when I'm doing this and remind me so that I can stop it, so that I cannot do it. This is so you can catch yourself and choose not to get upset. Um, and not getting upset or annoyed, doing other things, being challenged on your reactions, all of this helps you to put it in perspective. Um, and again, this is very general, so your circumstances are going to determine what that perspective is for you. But I think, and you guys are agreeing in the comments, that in general, um, don't sweat the small stuff. It's all small stuff. And all in quotations because, you know, there are some crises that are not small, but I think you guys know what I mean. Here's an example of like really small stuff. So if you're annoyed by clutter, actually a couple examples. If you're annoyed by clutter, you can instead choose to be thankful that the Lord provides for your needs and that you have stuff. <laughs> now I'm not advocating clutter or excess stuff or consumerism, but just turn it on its head. Clutter means that you are well provided for, everything that you need. If you're annoyed by the kids leaving crumbs on the counter, you can instead choose to be thankful that the Lord blessed you with children who are vibrant, active, and vibrant and active and happy enough that they forget things. Um, or children that can make their own sandwiches, that you don't have to make it for them. And later, after you calm down and are not annoyed or angry anymore, hopefully you nip that in the bud, 
then you call them into the kitchen to clean up their mess. But that's like not getting upset about it and dealing with it. And I'm loving your comments. Thank you so much for putting those in. The point with this example or these examples is that you can't control other people. Uh, you can't, in, if you're in your family and your kitchen, you, you don't have complete 100% control over everything that happens in the kitchen. You often can't control circumstances, but you can control your reaction. So don't be a slave to the negative, focus on the positive, and do what you can to change the pattern for the future. So that's in your own reaction or to address things that come up with your family, like our children. I mean, I'm not saying that if the children make messes, you don't handle it. Of course, we want to train them and teach them the right way to use the kitchen and clean up their messes, but we don't need to get so upset about it. It doesn't need to wreck our health or wreck our life. That's what I mean by small stuff. And it comes up with picky eaters. It comes up with unappreciative children or spouses at the table, or you know, just feeling like you're working, 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 and nobody's appreciating you. There's all kinds of things that we can sweat. And I'm saying, don't sweat it. Don't sweat it. Doesn't mean it doesn't need to change, but don't sweat it. Don't let it take over your life. Don't I, maybe you could say, don't wallow in it. Don't indulge it. Again, I'm speaking to myself, okay? <laughs> Number three is be willing to walk away. Now, I'm not advocating walking away from our families because that's not a choice we can make. Um, but in anything that we do or say or any kind of circumstance, we do have choices. Everything we do, we're choosing, generally speaking. Okay, so... Even though we're not going to walk away from our families, if there's hard circumstances or stressors or things that just aren't good for us, uh, you can choose not to engage in conversations or activities um, or other things that are more than you can handle. It's Basically, it's called saying no. Um, you don't have to do anything. You get to choose. So if you're going to participate in something that could be a potential stressor because you feel that it's the right thing to do, you are choosing that. You're not a victim of it. You're saying, I am going to do that because it's important and right, and Lord, help me handle it. Or you're going to say, I don't have to do that. Somebody else can do that. It's not good for me right now. I need sleep, or I need to, you know, a day of rest, or I have other obligations, so no, I'm not going to do that. You know, we have choices, and we have to justify them. Uh, you get to choose whether to gossip or put down somebody else. You get to choose whether to open your home to others and be hospitable, or if you don't care for their company and you keep it limited, or, you know, we're not able to host this right now. These are all choices. I heard a story recently, and I don't, I don't know if it's true. Maybe it was just an illustration. I think I've mentioned it on this podcast before. Anyway, the situation is a woman is seriously injured, and she's a great housekeeper and cook and all that, but she can't do the house, housework and cooking anymore. But the family is still expecting her to do it. Um, and they're resenting the fact that she's not. So the advice given to her was to sit down with her family and say, I can't do it. I need your help. You know, here's our recipes. What do you want to fix? You guys decide between you what your menu is and who's going to do what, etc. And I'm here if you have questions because I'm just sitting here. I can't move or act, but I can like tell you what to do next or I can give you input, but it's up to you to cook for each other. And the same thing with the housework. So, and again, this illustration is where this woman's in this situation and this is the advice given to her. So if she takes the advice to have that frank talk with her family, that's her choice to be proactive with it. If she doesn't do that, she's making a choice to just go along with it and let resentment build up in her family and maybe um, feel guilty about how she's not coming through. Um, so yes, and in the comments, um, uh, abounding hope is saying chronic Lyme gave her family that same opportunity. Exactly. That's what I was just about to say is that if this woman um, chooses to speak up and be honest with her family, she is giving them the opportunity to grow and meet each other's needs. She's giving herself the opportunity to make a really good proactive choice instead of everybody stay the same and resentment and bitterness and, you know, just poor living continue because she can't meet their needs. There's a big difference, and it's all about choice. What are you going to do with your circumstances? So that was number three, be willing to walk away. Um, and the reason I called it be willing to walk away is um, because it's all about your choice. So if, you, if you're willing to walk away, you're making the choice to do that. If you're willing to stay, you're making the choice to stay. And I want you all just to think about how 
how positively you can make those kind of choices in those stressful or you know stressor um, inherent situations now number four this is a big one for me is to focus on love because i believe <laughs> that kitchen life being a mom being a family cook being a member of society being a member of god's family it's all about love and we are so blessed that we get to act on that love for our family members day in and day out with how we cook and serve and nurture and care for them from the very littlest ones to our spouses that are you know equal with us partnering on this thing called life it's a wonderful blessing and it makes everything we do worth it yet it's so easy to forget that when we're stressed about things and so if you remember that it's all about love and you focus on love um, that's a huge part of putting everything in perspective about why we do. Now, I do want to say a caveat here that love is strong. It doesn't mean you're pushovers. It doesn't mean you do everything for everybody. There's a part of love that's a tough love. It's always love. It's never angry or annoyed, but it also means that, no, I'm not doing that for you because you should be doing that for yourself, but I'm willing to do this. And in the comments, our, I'm hearing our family is God's gift to us. Amen. Yes, our family is God's gift to us. And what are we going to do with that? Are we going to love them to the best of our ability? I would hope so. And when you focus on love, kind of everything else just fades away. Um, what I have in here in my notes is if you focus on loving your family the way God has gifted you, suddenly the most mundane, mundane and trivial things become huge opportunities to love and those same mundane and trivial opportunities that may have stressed you become like don't sweat the small stuff kind of thing. I love it when my husband or children ask me to make something special for them. I love to offer to do extra things for them just because. Um, in our family, my husband and I over the years have worked on intentionally worked on expressing our appreciation to each other all of us you know thank you thank you thank you I think I've mentioned on a previous podcast that a while back my husband decided he was gonna say thank you to everything anybody did nice for him even if it's the things that you take for granted like you know cooking you know mom always cooks the meal well let's say thank you for that so he always says thank you um and I have to say that this does feed me, but if we focus on love for our family, that reciprocation should not have to feed us because love in itself should feed us because we're doing God's work. We're doing what we're supposed to do to the best of our ability. That's what unconditional means. So even if you're not fed back, let's, I want to encourage you to just be satisfied and filled up with the action of loving how God has given you to love. And the beautiful part is that when you love unconditionally, nine times out of 10, that love comes back to you tenfold. It's amazing because I used to love unconditional. I used to love most of the time conditionally, like love for what people would do for me, my husband, my children, extended family. And I've stopped doing that. I made a choice to stop doing that and just to love and who cares about what comes back to me. And I'm getting more blessed than I ever was. <laughs> it's just how it works. Um, as a family, we always thank the cook. It's contagious, truly. Yes, I agree. When you are loving and thankful and appreciative, it is contagious. That's what I mean about when you love unconditionally, It come, nine times out of 10, it comes back to you un, uh, tenfold, like even more than you could ask or imagine, as, as God's word says. So that was number four, is to focus on love. And number five, now we're getting practical. I feel like the first four were like um, kind of mindset things, a little bit practical, but let, we're gonna get really practical with the last two here. And so number five is fix what you can fix because all the previous tips were more about, you know, ignore what's not working, um, focus on the positive, but we can be smarter than that. We, things can be revealed that aren't working right or just, you know, aren't, aren't feeding us, that are pushing our buttons instead. And we do have control over certain things. We are the family cook. The kitchen is our domain. It's up to us really how it works and how we delegate activity and how we set things up and et cetera like that. So we can be smart. So why not fix the things that you can fix? Fix the things that bother you in the kitchen. So if kitchen clutter bothers you, keep up with it. Um, a really wonderful thing that I've done for years is just to say, well, I have five minutes to spare right now and it could be morning or afternoon or twice a day or whenever it is. And so I'm going to spend that five minutes and I'm just going to put a bunch of stuff away and wipe counters and kind of tidy things. You can do a lot 
if you set a five minute timer. If you have 15 minutes, even better. You could also be more diligent about delegating. So get the kids on a good schedule for helping you regularly, making an expectation that they participate. Not just a, if mom calls you occasionally, you're gonna help, but have it be an expectation that I need your help um, you know, this many days a week at this time, it is your job to be my kitchen helper. So that's dishes, wiping counters, putting away dishes, food prep, assisting with the cooking, anything that goes along, putting away groceries. Um, I brought home the groceries yesterday and I asked my son to help a, a lot. And so he has been, and yesterday I didn't even have to ask. He just put away all of them while I was catching up with my husband about how the day went. And then I look over in the kitchen and it's all done. And I was like, oh, you are such a blessing. Thank you so much. Anyway, another thing you could do is reorganize your cupboards or pantry to keep your, uh, your organization fresh for how things are going these days. By these days, I mean, it's always changing. We are not, we are not stagnant, we change. We change what we're fixing, there's seasons, there's foods we don't use anymore. There's things we use more often now. So why leave the cupboards the same? Why leave your organization the same so it's frustrating, you don't have what you need, what you need is not in the right place, things like that. So reorganize it. And rather than feel overwhelmed by that, like you don't have to overall, overhaul your whole pantry in one day, um, tackle it a bit at a time. Like choose one cupboard or one area to tackle each day or every few days. I did this at the beginning of the year and as often as I was able, every few days I just tackled one thing and got, got so far in my life, actually in the whole house on just getting more on top of things. So it was wonderful. Okay, and so now we're at item number six. And this is another practical one. And this one I love and has the word love in it. <laughs> it's love your kitchen helpers. So if you have an instant pot, a crock pot, a rice cooker. These are amazing helpers in the kitchen. You can set and forget most of them and still turn out beautiful and tasty whole food dishes or components. Um, I'm just, I'm, I was talking about how things are these days. Well, these days for me, I've been lately in the habit of pressure cooking a whole chicken in the evening every couple days. So we're winding down like reading or talking or watching a movie and the pressure cooker, the Instant Pot, is cooking. So it's working and we're winding down. Did you get that? It's working and we're winding down. Um, and then before bed, all I'm doing is taking the whole chicken, bones and all, and putting it in the fridge. And so then in the morning, we have cooked chicken for whatever purpose we need. I may delegate the deboning of it to one of the children or do it myself while I'm listening to a podcast. But I just love this because this is not even during normal cooking times and we're doing something that enriches our life or our spirituality or our relationships and the kitchen helpers are cooking. So I do this with whole chickens, I do it with roasts, I do it with rice or beans or broth. And so like there's two benefits here, but there's probably even more, but the main one of the ones I'm thinking of already mentioned, which is it's cooking and I'm not. But the second one is that then when I go to prepare a meal, um, I have portions of the meal that are already done or in progress. So the cooking's even easier. Oh, and I just thought of a third benefit, and that is that family members have more options during free choice meals, like breakfast or lunch in our house is most of the time on your own, and so they're going to the fridge and there's things already ready for them to just whip up. So that, that was three benefits right there from loving your kitchen helpers. And that, um, just reducing the workload, reduces the stress and gives you more time to recharge or connect or do like the music or the singing or the reading or you know the things that that refuel you and recharge you and reconnect you with God or with your family members. If you can make use of kitchen helpers, um, or like number five was fix what you can fix, um, it can have an amazing impact on reducing the stress and adding more joy to your life. So those were the six items. The six ways to banish stress and get more joy in your kitchen and your life. I'll just go over them right now. Calm down. <laughs> and Mama Sue is saying more time to be calm. Exactly. Um, number two is don't sweat the small stuff. Number three is be willing to walk away, which, it, you know, that really is let your yes be yes and your no be no strongly. Whatever you choose, choose it. You have choices. Uh, number four is focus on love because love is everything and it puts everything in perspective. 
Five is fix what you can fix. And six is love your kitchen helpers. So I'd love to hear if you have other tips or ways to banish stress or find more joy. So the comments are waiting for you when this is released as a podcast, knowyourfoodpodcast.com slash 161. I also want to remind everybody that if you are not yet um, into traditional cooking like I am, and like many of our listeners are, I have a free video series for you at tradcookschool.com slash watch. So you'll get five videos from my very first e-course called Fundamentals, introduce you to the fundamentals of traditional cooking, my favorite techniques, and some of the ones I've mentioned here, rice and beans, um, just to introduce you to those principles of soaking and producing more healthy whole food ingredients. I am so appreciative for everyone who's here and all the wonderful comments. It makes me feel really good Uh, just to know that, you know, this topic, it's, it's sort of like stress, kitchen, but it's so real. And I don't think any of us should be living under chronic stress. I think we should do what we can um, to get out from that for more joy and more, more glory to God and more, more effectiveness in the work that he's given us to do. So God bless you all. Thank you for being here. And I will see you again in a week. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you'll come back again soon. Here's what you can do next. You can visit the show notes for this episode to get links and more resources about today's topic. Just visit knowyourfoodpodcast.com slash, and then without a space, type in the number of today's episode. You can stop by knowyourfoodpodcast.com slash watch to get five free traditional cooking videos from me. It's a gift. And finally, you can subscribe to this podcast on iTunes, the podcast app, or Stitcher. If you're on a mobile device, just search for Know Your Food with Warty right in the app. If you're on a desktop or laptop, just go to knowyourfoodpodcast.com slash iTunes right in your browser. And while you're there, please leave a rating or review. I love to get your comments and your feedback makes it much more likely that others who are interested in traditional cooking will find my podcast too. Thanks so much. God bless you. And I'll see you again soon.